Hi there. Um, this is a video to show you how to do the anticipated eighth note exercise. This is a really cool thing to learn about. So uh, read the instructions embedded in the file, but I'll just give you a quick uh, idea of what's going on. Here's an example of a piece of music where everything is on the downbeat. It's on a downbeat, nothing on an upbeat except for these uh, eighth notes in the drums. And the result is that it sounds kind of plodding. Here it goes. Very downbeaty, very kind of square. Um, so what we do with music often is we will put notes ahead of the beat and we'll tie them over so that there's this feeling of the music kind of pushing forward. It can give the music more intensity, a little bit more energy. So here's that same little riff um, where everything is put forward in time by one eighth note. It requires that you run an eighth note a half a beat earlier on the end of the previous beat. That's the way you remember how to do this. So here we are in beat one. Well, we have to come come earlier and write an, a, this same note on the and of four of this previous uh, measure, which means this note has to be shortened. So you can see what's happened. It's come forward, that eighth note. It's like you're stealing an eighth note from this note. And this note has also got an eighth note earlier, stealing an eighth note from that note. So the original was, And now listen to what it sounds like when everything's an eighth note earlier. You see how kind of more energy it has? It sounds a bit hipper, less square. All right, so how do we do that? You go over to this page. And um, the first thing, the, the order that I recommend you do it in is that in the first you do the chords, but you don't try to do any anticipations initially. You just go and put in, the, I've given you some voice leading, so you just continue that voice leading. Quick reminder of how to do that in finale. So we have a B flat major seven, we're in the key of B flat, and we have an E flat major seven. Now we have a C minor seven. Well, you know how to create a root position voicing very easily, so just go ahead and do that first. So you start on a C, you build up your thirds, there's your root third, fifth, and seventh. And now you just voice lead by using the, um, you could use the arrow keys and move down the notes that are too high an octave lower, but that, that's kind of slow. So the shortcut for that is to just hit shift an arrow and that automatically puts the note down an octave. And now you can see you have good voice leading because you're keeping common tones. That's a common tone. You can do the same thing with this one, build up the thirds, then bring things down an octave. Remember, the way you move through a voicing is by hitting command arrow. And then if you just wanted to move the note, you would move an arrow. But if you wanted to go down an octave, you do shift arrow. So that's the first one done. And then it will sound like this. Again, very plodding. Now, once you've gotten that done, that's stage one. Then you're going to go down to the bass and you're going to do your anticipations. So again, you're going to have to steal an eighth note. Well, what's, a, what's an, an eighth note less than a whole note is, um, you may not be aware of this, but it's something called a double dotted half note. So a half note is two beats short of an eighth note, of a, of a whole note. Um, a dotted half note is three beats in length, so that's still one beat short. Now what you could do is do eight, two, uh, two eighth notes like this and tie it over, okay? But there's another symbol you should know about, and then of course this would have to be tied too. But there's another symbol you should know about because it's very convenient, and it's something called a double dotted half note. Double dotted half note is seven eighth notes in length, and that's perfect for our purposes. So you can use that on the whole notes that has stolen an eighth note from that whole note. And now we can add that eighth note that is now has been freed up from that previous whole note and put it as an anticipation for our um, this, this note here, our half note. But we also need to make space for this note to be earlier. So this note now has to be shorter. 
so we make that be a dotted quarter. And if you don't know how to do that, what you do is you select the note. You select the note with the arrow over to the note. You hit, um, you, and you can just grab a quarter note there and put it on there, and then place it. Uh, hit the period key, and that will turn it into a dotted quarter. Now we're ready to do our eighth note here. And the way you do tie, of course, is hit the letter T. And now that's early, and then that's going to have to be changed to a dotted quarter in order to make room for this note to be earlier. And that's going to be tied over, hit T. And then that's going to have to be a, a dotted quarter. And it just see, it just keeps going. It's a chain reaction of everything having to move forward by an eighth note. And we use ties to connect into our previous thing. OK, so I'm going to stop there. You can pause the video and try to finish this example, try to get it to this point. And then when you come back, I'll show you how to do the rest of it. OK, we're back. And hopefully you will end up with this answer. We have this eighth note here. It's tied over. That had to become an eighth note. This eighth mm -hmm. note was tied there. This had to become an eighth note as well. That created the extra eighth note there. We tie that over. This note can still remain a half note because we're filling out the rest of the measure. Now, one more thing. Uh, when you have two eighth notes tied in the middle of a you know, when as long as it's not going across the invisible bar line, well, you can just make that into a quarter note. So let's do that and get rid of the tie. And now you have all the anticipations. But now it sounds a little weird because the bass player is anticipating but the keyboard player is not. So we're going to now go to stage three, and you're going to put the voicings early. Now, this is a little more complicated because there's no more notes. But the way to do it is to change this note first into a double into a double dotted half note, this chord rather, two period keys. And then just simply create your voicing, the exact same voicing you have here in eighth notes right there. And then you're all set. Right? Then you do Command A to select all the notes, hit T, and bingo, you've got your anticipated voicing. Now you go over here, you change that into a double dotted by um, grabbing a half note, hit that same chord with the half note, hit the double dots, two period keys, put in your eighth note, make the same voicing you have in the previous measure. Command A to select all the notes, hit T, bingo, and carry on. Now pause the video, and I will finish up the, uh, you can then check your answers. By the way, I should have made, uh, I forgot to make the B flat here. I should have made a B flat. I should have made this a half note. And I should have spelled a B flat chord here, which I will do. So just pause the video and finish, and then check your answer. Okay, we're back, and there you see the answer. Um, we have a uh, our double dotted half note here. We have our eighth note anticipating the F7, and then we have our eighth note anticipating the last B flat major seven. It sounds like this. Okay, so that's it. Now you have two more to do on your own, and they are right here. These are triads, so you just only have to have three notes on top. And these are back to using uh, seventh chords. So do it in that order. Put in your voice leading first, all whole notes and half notes, or whatever the note value is of the chord, the duration of the chord. Then uh, keep it real simple and square. Then do your bass, uh, anticipate your bass, get your bass all you know anticipated an eighth note earlier. And then once you've got your bass in place, in base in place, then you know anticipate your chords. It'll be easier to do it that way, and follow the uh, techniques I've described here. Now, one final thing, just so that you can get uh, feedback on your work as soon as possible, I'm actually going to 
include at the end of this video the complete answer key for this. So at this point, pause the video, complete your work, then check your answers, and then hand it in by uploading under the digital upload for this unit. Um, so you will get credit for having done it. Um, yes, you could just copy your answers from the video, but obviously you're going to learn a lot more if you try to figure it out first. Then check your answers, then make any corrections, and then upload the uh, final completed project. Pause the video and complete the work. Answer key for the voicings. And once you've checked those the voicings, you just double check those and you should play back your file. See here everything. Now pause and do your base notes. The complete answer key for this assignment. And don't forget to play it back. Now in this one, um, before I give you the answer key, I want you to, I want to be able to explain to you how to do this one because this might have messed you up before. Um, this has an extra bass note. So what we have to do is take an eighth note off of this. So this is currently six eighth notes or three beats. We have to make it into five eighth notes. So we make it into a half note plus an eighth note, which you tie over. And then this eighth note, goes here, anticipating that. But now this has to be an eighth note less because we need an eighth note there to anticipate there. And we go on from there. And the only thing we do is we co we correct this, even though it will sound right. It's not written the ideal way. This is better to write this as a quarter note. So we erase that, make this into an eighth, a quarter note and get rid of the tie. And now you have the correct way that that should be written. Okay, so now go ahead and complete the rest of your base note anticipation and your voicings. Base uh, answer key. Now you just got to do your voicings. Pause the video, do your voicings. And there's our answer. Okay, now I've got a feeling that some of you might have uh, possibly made a few errors here because of you're new to this. One of them is spelling the F sharp seven chord because it is a non-diatonic chord. It's not uh, the diatonic five chord in uh, the uh, natural major scale is five sharp is F sharp minor seven, but this is specifically written as F sharp dominant seventh, which of course is a major chord has a major third, and the major third above F sharp is A sharp. And that's why we have to have that A sharp there. But when we go to anticipate our B minor seven, it has an A natural. So you, if you put in your eighth note anticipation, you had to remember to change this back to a natural. If you didn't know how to do that, if you mistakenly left it as an A sharp, it would have sounded like this, like a James Bond chord, a minor major seven sound. Because accidentals are good for a whole measure, and Finale knows that, and so it keeps that an A sharp unless you tell it to do something different, just the way a real musician would. So what you do, the way to change it to a natural is to hit the letter N, and the first letter of the word natural, and now it will be correct. And you'll get that. Yeah. Okay, that's the end, including the answer key. I hope you are getting the sense of how anticipations can really help music have more energy and, and make it sound cooler and hipper in uh, many situations.